Yeah, snatch them out from among us. Watch this. Like you snatch out a sheep for slaughter and then prepare them for the day of slaughter. Why is he uh, being so raw right here? Why is he being so angry? Why is he being so vindictive? Oh, chapter 11. Y'all was here last week. Chapter 11, they got behind his back and said, let's kill him. And they came up with a conspiracy to do it, the men of Anathoth, which was his own town, his own boys. So instead of him going back and fighting them with his fist, he decides to call on Yah. And what he asks Yah to do is, uh, one, Yah, I, I know that, <laughs> I know you got this thing and this is you right and everything you do is right, but I'm, I'm trying to understand this part. You the judge, I'm on your team, they're against you. You've tried my heart and you tried theirs. You know they're nothing but talk. But I'm in this with the heart. So what I want you to do for me, if you would, sir, if you would, oh yeah, uh, can I say it like this together without people being upset with me? Kill them before they kill me. I mean, if they're the problem, then how long shall the land mourn? It's, I'm reading right off the Bible. And the earth of the field wither. If they're the reason that everything is going bad, he's right there, for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. How long are you going to let this keep going? The beasts are consumed and the birds. Because they said, he shall not see our last end. This is when he goes back to chapter 11 when he was saying that they made a conspiracy and they basically were saying that we'll be here when he's long gone. Did I just interpret that for you, Zion? We'll see his end. In other words, we'll see his death. He won't see our death. That was their word. Now, in verse 5, you might not know this reading in English, but now we get Yah's answer. So that's his plea. And he based his plea to the Most High based on what they had already said to him in chapter 11. And basically he said, they want to kill me. I want you to kill them before they kill me because they said they're going to be here long after I'm gone. I won't see their end, they'll see mine. Now you see the answer in the next verse, and this is my sermon. This is Yah's answer. Talking to his own servant now. If you have run with footmen and they have wearied thee, you see it? Then how can thou contend with horses? If you ran with footmen and they got you almost ready to go into town, you exhausted. How you gonna race against a horse? And if in the land of peace, where he's talking about Israel and it's a, and uh, Jerusalem, the holy, the holy land of Canaan, is a peaceful place. And wherein thou treadest, in other words, the place where you live and move and operate and function, uh, they weary thee. How then wilt thou do in the swelling of Jordan? Now, that's what I mean. If you're having troubles right now when everything is cool in the land and at the house, how are you going to handle it when you end up? In the wilderness of the Jordan, watch this, when it's overflowing its banks, out there with the lions and the tigers and the bobcats and the foxes. Are y'all in the room with me now? Y'all come back to him with a question. And he said, but I want to show you something else, man. Uh, you think it's bad. The men of Anathoth, you think it's just them? Go to verse 6. He said, brethren, this didn't start with the fellas outside. He said, it's your brothers, blood brothers. And 
the house of your daddy, your father. They started this. They dwelt treacherously with thee. Yeah. They have called the multitude after thee. And this is Yah's word to him. Don't believe nothing they say. He tells his prophet, it's your brothers. I know you thinking this is coming from the outside. You don't know who started this whole thing. But I'm going to tell you who started it. Your brother. What you mean my brother? You know what I'm saying? But we play, we play soccer and football and baseball together and clean up the same room and had to sleep in the same room because we were poor. One at the head of the bed, one at the foot of the bed. Y'all don't know I'm about that because everybody got their own room these days from back in the day. You're talking about my brother that when we was riding in the chariot that was too small for the family, we had to sit on laps. You talking about that brother? Yeah, they called the multitude. Don't believe nothing they say, even though they speak word. Because the truth of the matter is, I have forsaken this house. My heritage, as far as I'm concerned, is gone. I left my heritage. I have given the dearly beloved of my soul to the hand of the enemy. My heritage to me is as a lion in the forest that cries against me. Yah says, my heritage is not with me. It's against me like a lion. Therefore, I hated it. And my heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. Now that word speckled bird represents us. It's a, it's, a, uh, uh, it's a bird of prey. The speckled bird of prey is like a, um, a hawk, which is unclean. That's his point. My people have become unclean. The birds round about her are against her. He said, no. This is in response to that. So I'm going to call the beast of the field to come and devour her. Powerful text. I told you it's, it's, just, it's one of those texts that you got to stop. you got to try to like let that sink in. I want to talk about how to contend with horses. Y'all be seated. If you haven't ran, if you were running with the footmen and you tired and they wore you out, how are you going to contend with horses? Is the prophet really talking about running with horses? <laughs> this, is this is interesting. Um, three little points I'm going to put out real quick. To you, Zion. Number one, your call. Number two, Yas Thomas's. And number th three, your training. So it's your call, Yas Thomas's, and your training. Those are my three points, and then I'm going to, and normally I don't do a whole lot of three-pointed stuff, but I want you to catch this because this is directly in line with this particular text. The very first thing we are told is that Jeremiah, at his call, was warned, they ain't going to hear you. I'm sending you, but they're not going to listen. We studied that together. He said, as a matter of fact, don't be afraid of their faces because these Hebrew Israelites are going to look at you with some mean and angry faces. He says, and even when they come together to get rid of you and devour you, he said, this is before he even started preaching, he says, don't worry about it because I will be your support. I will be your protector. He says, all I, all I need you to do, Jeremiah, just do what I tell you. Just go where I tell you to go. Preach the message I tell you to preach and uh, be faithful to me. But just know that opposition is coming. And of course, we find out in chapter 11 that the focus of his preaching to this point has primarily been in a place called Anathal. Now, most of you all have never even heard of that city, and that's by design. And the reason you haven't heard of it, one, you ain't been reading your Bible. But number two is because, to be, believe it or not, it's just not that significant of a place. I mean, it's significant because Jeremiah was there, but other than that, 
you would go through Anathoth and wouldn't even stop for a gallon of gas. I mean, you wouldn't even stop to get a soda. You'd just be like, in the town, out of the town. But it was Jeremiah's town. It was insignificant, is my point. It was small. But it was from that small place that we see the first conspiracy to kill the prophet. It comes from a little hick town like Madeira. <laughs> like Fireball. Like Pinedale. Like, what are you talking about? You want to kill the prophet. And he finds out it's the men of Anathol. And it's like, that's my town. What do you mean? Yes, it's the men of the city. No different than Fresno, you Hebrew. I told you on last week, and I'm not going to go over that again, but I'll put it out again. That every time a person decides to teach the Torah to the people and to get them to turn back to Yah, the people, the people, the Hebrews, kill them. It's what we do. It's a part of our bad past. It's, it's part of our past. We ain't got no problem killing. We kill prophets. That's what Hebrew Israelites have done. It started way back in the garden when Cain killed Abel because Abel brought a righteous sacrifice and Cain didn't. And Yah was gracious to Abel's sacrifice, but he held Cain's offering in contempt. And instead of Cain just acting, asking for forgiveness and saying, now what can I do to bring a better sacrifice or a better offering, he decides the way to solve the problem is to kill his brother. as though the Most High wouldn't watch the murder. And then come back to old crazy Cain and say to him, hey man, uh, where's Abel? He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Uh oh, there's that word we learned today. Shema. Am I my brother Shema? Am I his watchman, his guard, his protector? Yeah, Hebrew. You're the oldest, ain't you? Oh, same thing happened to Isaiah. You do know it was not a threat from Rome that killed Isaiah. Y'all do know that, right? Manasseh, who was Isaiah's cousin, and now they're going to do it to Jeremiah. And he won't be the last. It was the Hebrews that wanted to kill Elijah. It was the Hebrews who wanted to kill him. And, and guess what? Every prophet has in common. Every prophet had in common was that when they got ready to prophesy, all they were trying to do was get people to turn back to Torah. That's all they were trying to do. Y'all leaving Torah, you need to come back. So much so that I could begin to name the prophets from Abel all the way to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, who was murdered by Hebrews between the gate and the altar. It's what we do. John, the baptizer, was killed. Am I right about it? Because he was saying what? Prepare you the way of Yah. Repent! which means turn back to Yah. And of course, you know, the greatest of all men who have ever put foot to soil, our Hamasiah, when he got here, same message, turn back to keeping the laws and commandments and statutes of the Most High Yah. He said, the doctrine that I have is not mine, but it is he who sent me. In other words, Yeshua never started a new religion called Christianity. He came here to restore what we would call the old time religion that was given to the prophets that were before him. Are y'all in here? That's why he kept telling them to read the prophet, read Moses, read the prophets. It's about me, it's about the Torah, it's about Yah's commands. And what did the Hebrew do to him? Y'all talk back to me. They killed him too. Oh, wait a minute. He did have 12 disciples. One of them, Judas, killed himself. But y'all know what happened to James, right? 
Because he said if they do it to a green tree, talking about himself, then they'll also do it to a brown tree, talking about his disciples. But he said, as the Father has sent me, even so send I you. Did you get that? He says, see, the Father sent me to die. And therefore, I'm sending you to die. That's too heavy for us today on the Shabbat, ain't it? Because it's heavy for me. Because I'm the one up here with the mic <laughs> telling people to turn back. <laughs> to, to turn back to Torah, to our Heavenly Father. Rule of life. Watch this. James was killed. John was killed. Buried and boiled in hot oil and exiled on a line on a, on a isle called Patmos. The record is, it was an execution that was botched. But nevertheless, he had to keep the scars of the burning. Can you imagine somebody dropping you in oil on fire, boiling oil? Oh, I keep going. You do know they say that Peter was crucified. And some say flipped upside down. And time would fail me to tell the story of all the rest, but you know the most famous Rabbi Shaul lost his head on a chopping block by Nero. And he already had envisioned his blood pouring out of his body like the drink offering is poured upon a sacrifice. And he likened his death as the drink offering in the what y'all call the Old Testament that's poured upon the sacrifice to enable it to have a little sweeter savor. He says, if what I'm doing can touch a little bit of your sacrifice as it goes to the heaven, and I can, I can. I can enhance the beauty of it just a little bit, then it was worth it for me. Because I'm ready to be offered like that. And can you see the picture of his body laying down? Once his head is decapitated, the blood comes out just like it's poured out of a jar onto the sacrifice. And then here you and I come along, we don't think we ought to get a splinter. We don't think we ought to go out in the rain. Oh, it's too hot. <laughs> if it ain't on cable, is there an app for that? <laughs> what are we talking about here? Giving your life for anything. That's my whole point. I'm trying to show you all something that Jeremiah was going through. Jeremiah was going through it, y'all, because he got called. He was a young man in his youth. And y'all said, come on, come preach for me. I saw you ever since you was a baby. Before you were born, man, I had already made you a preacher. So come on, let's come preach for me. And he said, okay, I'll go. And then after he started going and doing what y'all said, they plotted to kill him. And then he turns around and says, um, yeah, I'm not judging you on righteousness. But I do have a question about your judgment. That, do you know what I mean, the difference between that? I have, I, have a, I have a problem with what I'm seeing with my eyes on how you sort of bless some people and don't bless others. It doesn't seem to line up with what I know is right. He ain't the only one had that problem with Zion. You read Psalm 73, same, same thing. In Psalm 73, the writer says simply this. He says, I was envious of the wicked because it looked like their feet were always on solid ground and they were always being blessed and prosperous. He says, and my feet was slipping. He said, as a matter of fact, I almost completely slipped back. <laughs> We say it like this, backslid. <laughs> I almost became wicked is what he was saying. 
because they seem to be doing so well. He says, you know, but that psalm says he was he he got it straight once he got into the into the temple of Yah. But I want to show you here that this preacher also has the same problem. Now I can sort of relate to that. One, I can relate to it because when the Yah first talked to me about telling the people, there was a conspiracy in this city. Amongst pastors who were my friends, I thought were my friends, who have preached for me, and I preached for them. Some of them Hebrews I baptized. Some of them Hebrews found their wives in our congregation. Some of them Hebrews, I blessed them babies. Y'all not hearing me. They wrote a letter to me, but they sent it to everybody in Fresno, every leader in Fresno. The black Baptist pastor sent a letter against me saying that they have the authority to kick me out the fellowship and out of the kingdom of God at large. Now I don't know where the hell that at large came from. That's funny to me. But when you kick a Hebrew out the kingdom, what you're really saying is, let him go to hell. Pastor David and his congregation go to hell. Because that's where you're going if you ain't going to the kingdom, right? Ain't but two places. You can't go to heaven and hell. You can't be in the kingdom and out the kingdom. So I'm not preaching this message on something I've just heard. This ain't here. This happened to me. As a matter of fact, I keep the letter with me all the time. I just have to read it every now and then. It's signed too and dated. Oh, it's time to go already. All right, let me just show you. Watch this. I used to be all like down in the dumps behind it. And then I read this passage and it tripped me out. I'm complaining because, like Jeremiah, we're, we're renting a facility in a community center. And yet, some of these Hebrews who are teaching people to be lawless are pastoring some of the biggest congregations and churches in the city. Uh, we can't hardly keep gas in the car. And these Hebrews worried about the next new car. Y'all not hearing me. We're trying, to keep, we're trying to put the tags on our car so we can just Drive legally. <laughs> Y'all not understand me. We're struggling. The congregation is struggling. Trying to pay the rent. They're looking at the next vacation home. And they're steady leading people away from Torah. And I'm leading people to Torah. They the one who wrote the letter that I should go to hell. But the reality is, Yah has already tried my heart and he knows that I'm trying to help the people see what was actually written in the book. So here I am with my pity party, just like Jeremiah, it's interesting. You know, all prophets and preachers, they're pretty much the same. Right? Well, they're all brothers, or we're all cousins. So it ain't like we're high tower people, that's not the picture. We're just folk who've been called to tell it, right? So here I'm trying to tell it. I was called young. Jeremiah, my cousin, he was called young. So it's the same experience. And here's the kicker, watch this, here's the kicker. When Yah told us what was going to happen when he called us, we heard him, but we didn't hear him. We heard what he said, but we didn't really hear it. He told us in the beginning, hey, man, look, everybody's not going to like you. Everybody's not going to believe you. you know, everybody's not going to be your friend. And we take it and go, oh, yeah, that's right. Hallelujah. We're just going to be strong until it happens. Then you start wondering, is Yah judging right? Because the wicked are doing better, seemingly, than the righteous. And that's his question to the Most High. I don't get it. You know that they are messing up the people. You know they're messing up the land. And yet they continue to prosper while we continue to suffer. And Yah says this to him, and, and believe it or not, I'm pushing my way to the end. He says, first of all, let me say this. 
He didn't say what I thought y'all would say. What I thought y'all was going to say to Jeremiah when he made this complaint, because it's legit. I thought he was going to say, man, everything's going to be all right. I'm about to bless you more than I bless them. I'm about to give you a bigger church, a bigger congregation, a bigger car. You're going to have more clothes. Don't even worry about it, man. No. That's what we want him to say. But the reality, he said, was to him, he says, he says, uh, here it is. If you ran with footmen and they wearied you, wait a minute, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know what he said? You know what he really said to the prophet? It was what I call sort of a gentle rebuke. He's like Hebrew. If you already tired and you ain't ran with nobody but Anathoth, you get more out behind Anathoth. Hebrew, nobody even know Anathoth. Nobody even recognizes Anathoth. There's no buildings in Anathoth. There's no great centers in Anathoth. There is no great commerce in Anathoth. There is no great world powers. There's no kings in Anathoth. There's no world rulers in Anathoth. And you tripping because the people in Anathoth, what you did, you can't run with the footmen. Those are footmen. In other words, look at what he said to him. He said, he said, boy, you just started. <laughs> Wait a minute. A conspiracy against my life from the man at Anathoth is just starting? And then y'all turns around and tells him, well, it's kind of deeper than that. It's not just the men at Anathoth. See, in other words, he's not making it no easier. He said, actually, to be, if you want me just to be honest with you, Jeremiah, it's your brother. Your brother started it. And your daddy is in on it. So your brother and your dad have said some things that made the multitudes of people go against you. Your brother said, Marv is taking this too far. Y'all get it? Your daddy said to the people, Marv, he studies a lot and he's going through some things, y'all. So I don't believe what he's really saying, but just, you know, pray for him. He'll be okay. Same thing they said to Jeremiah. They said, man, you know, they didn't call him Jeremiah's name, but Jeremiah. They, they probably said, you know, you know, little yee yee. That's probably what they call it. We nickname everybody. Man, you know Yee is cool with everybody, man. Ye, but but Ye is flipping out. He claimed to have these visions and y'all talking to him about, you know. So what do you think? Because we're going to always ask your family. So then what do you think about what he's saying? And when his brother said, well, I don't agree. Y'all get that? When his brother said, I don't agree with everything he's saying. It then puts the fuel to the fire for the multitude to say, not even his own brother or his daddy believes his teaching. So killing him won't really matter, not even to his daddy or his brothers. Him being dead will be just getting him what? Out of the way. So you would think the Most High would have mercy on, the, on this preacher, but he's not. He's saying, man, look, you just start. You know what he calls them? Footmen. He says, you can't run with footmen. Now here's my point, because I'm, I'm arguing with the text too, because I'm also a preacher. So I'm, I'm in the text with Jeremiah. I know it's a losing battle, it was me thinking I'm going to win the battle. I'm, I'm going to lose the battle with the Most High, but I'm going to still argue with Jeremiah, because we in this thing together. And this was my argument when I raised my hand. I said, I got a question. Yes, sir. Don't all men have feet? <laughs> what, what, what are we talking about here? Who else are we supposed to be running with if it's not footmen? Because when you called us, you told us you was bringing us to men, right? So if you run with men and you can keep up with men and you can contend with men, 
aren't you doing good? I mean, you didn't say run with babies. I mean, we ain't racing, you know, mice and cats. I mean, we ain't, we, you got us with men and we hanging with men. He said, oh, you think this is just that? Oh, so you think you can be normal and average and work for me in this kingdom? Oh, don't work like that. What do you mean don't work like that? No, see, if you're going to hang with me, this is the most high. If you're going to hang with me, you're going to have to learn, watch this, how to contend with horses. Let that sink in. If you're going to hang out with me, it's not about running with men. Just to, just to really run with me, you're going to have to be willing to deal with these horses. Now, what person wanting to do some running, whether it's in track or whatever, they say, now listen, this is your competition. Said, now, you, you, you're expecting to line up in the blocks, right, with nine other guys, or at least eight other guys, right, in the, in the track. So you've been running with the men, and you've been getting third and second and third and fourth, Every now and then you win a race or two, and uh, you've been doing this for a while, and now you're tired. And you go back to your coach and you say, uh, I've been running, and these people hate me because I keep placing. I don't always get first place, but I keep placing. And I, I, I kind of think that my running days should be kind of over now. <coughs> and then your coach tell you, oh, that's just basic training. I say, what are you talking about? Oh, you're going to be racing horses. I won't be doing what? Those men are just, that was your warm up. If you can't get through Anathal, ain't no reason you going to Jerusalem. If you can't handle Anathal, you're going to be in trouble in Babylon. If you can't deal with Anathal, then just take the kings of Egypt off because I didn't call I didn't call you to run just with Anathoth. I, I just put you here to get some basic training. And you already then fell into the trap of questioning me about who, what, when, and how, and why. Can I give you all these three little points? I'm not giving you my first one really, but can I give you these quick three points? Your call, man, I already told you what your call was. You were going, watch this, I was setting you above. He said, when I called you, I called you to be above nations, above kingdoms. I wasn't calling you to run with no anathoth. Are you serious? If you can't get through anathoth, if you can't get out of Fresno, you can forget L.A. and San Francisco. If you can't deal with Madeira, you can't handle Pinedale, then going to D.C. and talking to the President of the United States and really running with the horses are going to be out of the question. Because the powers that be that you have to deal with make these men look like less than men. Or to flip that illustration, they are like race horses among men. So you want me to run with who? Them. You mean the leaders of the world? Yes. Hold on, y'all. Let me think about something. I'm mad because, like, you know, uh, Wilson, and, uh, you know, Brewer, and he's like, who, who, are the, who are they? Who are you talking about? Yeah, and he's up, uh, uh, Dickerson, whatever. And the most last one, uh, who are they? 
You talking about Amazon? You think you're doing good because you just made little ripples in Amazon? If you can't handle that, ain't no need me taking you no further. You know, I used to run track. I was fast, too. Matter of fact, I was just telling Smitty this the other day. Um, uh, I just turned the, the big, the big five old, y'all. Ooh, scary. When I crossed over, I said, whoa. One of the realities that came to me was, it should have came to me a long time ago, but it really came to me, I don't know why this time, that I'll never run fast like that again. I never feel that. I was fast. Everybody in the room may know that. I was never the fastest, but I was really, really fast runner. Just, could just get in the wind and go. But I never shall forget when uh, we had we had one little, you know, Madera County meet. You know, our little county school. We came to Fresno. We won all little county Fresno County meets, right? And then you go to uh, state. Then you you know you win state, whatever, relay team, whatever. I never forget when we got on the we got on the um, got on the bus to represent California down in, in Southwood, Indiana, and uh, we saw some fellas from around the United States of America. And we didn't know existed. <laughs> I mean, we thought we was flying. I mean, <laughs> we saw cats that. <laughs> oh. You, you're not in Madeira anymore. No, you, you got somebody here representing the state of New York in the lane next to you. Not a town in New York. He the fastest in the state. The fastest in the state of Louisiana is on this side. See, we were just making, you know, we training, but we weren't training, you know, these fellas getting in the blocks, before they get in the blocks, they doing the complete splits. <laughs> Stretch it off. <laughs> Y'all down there say, oh my goodness gracious, this is incredible. In other words, when you just doing your little thing in your little circle in your little town, you think you're doing something. But the end game Shouldn't have, shouldn't, shouldn't have been from, from the coat. Just win county. You're racing to win valley. Y'all get it? What should have been put in our heads in the very beginning is the national record for the four by 100 is the national record for the two, well back in the day, I'm aging myself, when I first started running, they called it a 220. Then it turned into the 200 meter. They should have just gave you the time of the best in the nation and had you training for that. Are y'all with me? See, they would be considered the horses. Y'all get it? We would say it like this, them the big dogs. I have a cousin, Terry Bowen, who um, set the record. I think it's still standing at Fresno State. If it's not, it, it stayed for a long time. And he ran indoor. He got Olympic trials. Went down there and I uh, talking to him. I said, "Cuz, cause he 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 didn't qualify. Even though he had a fast time, he didn't get in the Olympics. But he went to Olympic trials." I said, "Man, what happened?" He said, "He said, Mark, man, man, the dudes are so." I was like, what do you mean that? It's, I mean, you in the blocks, man, next to guys you don't watch run in the Olympics. You in the, in the blocks next, you talk to Terry all the time. He said, man, you, you in the blocks next to like Maurice Green. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, these guys are like lining up next to you. And he said, the weird thing about it is, he said, on all of my levels of, of running, everybody was always cordial. He said, man, when we got, he said, man, when I got to that level where I was about to go to Olympic trial, he said, them, them, they didn't even talk. Some of them wouldn't even look at you. Some of them would frown. Like, well, I don't know why you're even here. 
And he said it affected me to the point that I couldn't really, I said, I couldn't truly run my race. He wasn't trained properly for the horses. For the ones that's really doing it. Now, I went long on that illustration because I just want to share this with you. You all think what you're doing right now with your cousin and your brother and your friend is where God wants to take you. You have no idea. If you're tired now because your sister ain't getting it, you know what I mean? I mean, if you want to throw in a towel because Auntie Ray Ray said, uh, I, I still don't understand it, uh, pass the pork, and that just make you go home crying. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, wipe your little tears and understand, here's the, here's, the, here's the answer. It's part of the training. See, the meats come, watch this, every so often. But the training is every day. And so my brothers and my sisters, we are all in that great race. And when you read Hebrews chapter 11, you will find out that you are not the first one to run this race. And the people who make it into that hall of fame, that's what I call it, the biblical hall of fame, the ones whose names are there, and if their names are not actually mentioned, they get an honorable mention by saying, and others were. When they, you start putting that list together, you're going to realize they were running with the horses. That's why they're in the Hall of Fame. That's why they're in the Hall of Fame. Because they ran with the horses and won. Whoop Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, I'm about to feel it. Whoop then. Whoop. Had Nebuchadnezzar. Eating grass with a slip mind and dreadlocks laying down like eagle feathers. <laughs> they ran with horses. Uh, fire didn't burn them, but they still got cast in. They ran with the horses. Thrown in the lion's den to survive. <laughs> that's running with the, come on, now y'all got it right. That's contending with horses. Yeah, yeah. Some of these fellas were able to tell the king it ain't going to rain until I say it's going to rain. They were contending <laughs> with horses. Some fellas went to the evil queens and said, I know you seek my life, but let me tell you something, queen. I'm going to tell you. The dogs will lick your blood. <laughs> they were running with the, they running with horses. You think Moses was running with footmen when he went to Pharaoh? No, he was running with the horses. <laughs> the Pharaoh and his army got what? Drowned in Jeremiah, Anathoth, are you kidding me? <laughs> you have no idea what's in store for you. He says, So, what I want you to do, I want you to just go back to your call and remember what I told you in the beginning. I told you you would be persecuted. You would go through it. But I also made you a promise. I promise I wouldn't leave you. <laughs> Can I shut it down? I promise I'd be with you every step of the way. I promise. I'm going to close this message when I tell you in this room and all you Hebrews worldwide, he promised to stay with us in the good time, in the bad time. On top of the mountain, down in the valley, when I'm free, when I'm behind bars, when my life is threatened, he said, Lo, I'm with you, Papa. Always. Yeah. 
always. How long is always? All the way? So take your little basic training, y'all. And realize that your basic training is just getting you ready for that great day. Hallelujah. So how should we run? Run with patience. Run knowing that the race is not given to the swift, nor to the strong. But he that, what, endures to the end, the same shall be, what, saved. Run knowing that you have a Hamasiah that has also ran the same race you running. In other words, he didn't just make the race as the Alpha, but he completed the race, or I'm sorry, as the Aleph. And the Tau, he's the author, which means the race you're running, he's the one that designed it. He designed your highs. He designed the lows. He designed the long stretches. He designed the curves. He designed the smiles. He designed the places of pit stop and tears. It's all his design. He's not only, watch this, the starter of the race, but he's the coach running with you in the race, but he's also the one cheering you on while you run the race, and he's also the finish line of the race. But if you can't handle Anathol, then you can't run with this crowd. Because we're surrounded by a whole crowd of witnesses. And they don't want you just running with the footmen. We got to run with the big horses. And let me tell you something, when we run with the big horses, I'm trying to tell you something, it's going to shock the world. How did they do it? I said, well, we was training. Trained for them. Yeah, we trained for them. And that's impossible. You can't outrun a horse. Well, it depends on who your trainer is. You see, in the end, we win. Shabbat shalom. Children of Zion, you can turn that off. <laughs> I kept you all too long today, but I, I just had to get that out. I want you to know something.